Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and a new paper crafting video. Today I am finally getting to play with my Spellbinders Club Kits for August. Yeah, I know it's the last day of the month, but we're going to play with them anyway because these are so much fun. Let's take a look first at all the Club Kit offerings for August. The Large Die of the Month, Colorful Expressions Blooms. Clear Stamp and Die, Colorful Expressions Blossom. There's the die set. Embossing folder is called Hand Drawn Lines. We have a 3D embossing folder, Floral Expressions. Then we have our stencil. This is a five-piecer, Colorful Expressions Garden. A hot foil plate that's called Colorful Splash. A better press called Colorful Bold Splatters. A wax seal called Bold Hello. And then two kits I don't own are the Colorful Expressions Sentiments, Small Die of the Month, and then also the Stitched Colorful Palette. A stitching die very cool okay the large die of the month is one I have already used in a live video crafty fun with friends at the very beginning of the month August 1st I will have that video linked for you below so you can check out the making of this card but also some fun with my friends who use some of the other club kits it's a really fun video all right then for today I'm gonna start out with using the 3d embossing folder it is gorgeous. And what I am doing today is making some quick, simple, easy, and beautiful cards because I think these club kits really are standalone pieces that are great to use to make quick and easy cards. So this has just been embossed on white cardstock. I already had it done because I almost used it for that card I just showed you with the large die of the month, but it seemed too busy. So I'm gonna make it its own card. I cut it in half and I really felt like you could turn this on its side and have it go either direction, standing up or on its side. So I am doing a little ink blending over the top. I started out with saltwater taffy and then I'm adding some abandoned coral. And I thought I was gonna leave this lighter in the middle, but it just didn't end up that way. So I'm gonna go with where this seems to be headed. And what I'll do is just ink blend all the way down with that abandoned coral. And um, I had barely any ink on my brush, but then I'm gonna bring back the saltwater taffy and I'm gonna go right under that abandoned coral. So instead, I'm now going for an ombre effect where it's darker at the top, medium tone in the middle, and lightest at the bottom. And man, this embossing folder could not be more gorgeous. And I think ink blending on top of this, going in with a really light hand and a brush, um, just helps it pop even more. And I really love how it turned out. I had to refrain from splattering it with water because <laughs> I love that, but I thought it was just gorgeous on its own. And we're gonna add some stamping on the top. So I brought out the clear stamp of the month and it is a gorgeous large focal piece. So what I'm gonna do is ink this up and the words for you from the set with clear embossing powder, and then I'll emboss that with gold, I'm sorry, clear embossing ink and emboss it with gold powder. I don't know if you can see I have a gold powder mess on my desk. I didn't realize there is a hole in my embossing powder container <laughs> that was made from my heat gun touching it when it was hot. So I made a couple messes on my desk with that today. <laughs> All right, so there you can see the images cut out. I'm cutting a second piece for both of these out of a piece of heavyweight cardstock that's backed and covered on the front with double-sided adhesive. So I can make this a little bit thicker and have it stick down to my really textured panel a little bit more easily, and it'll be raised up a tiny bit. So there you can see peeling the second layer of adhesive backing off, and then it'll stick right down to my card. I did the same thing for the words for you. So it has double-sided adhesive on the front of the cardstock and on the back, and it's a heavyweight cardstock. So that will give me a nice little lift onto these pieces and also help them to stick down. So there you have it. We're going to do next a little 
bit of watercoloring. This is also quick and easy. You can keep your watercolor very loose. It does not have to be anything spectacular. And I think the fastest way to do watercoloring is to take that same Distress Oxide ink that we already used on the cover of the card and press that down onto the glass mat, give it a little spritz with water, bring in a watercolor brush, and just start filling in these petals. I'm keeping it very simple. I'm not using multiple colors. I'm just really making it loose and not worrying so much about perfection. Just keeping a nice loose wash of color over these blossoms and that is enough. Of course you could also really get into coloring these and watercoloring them and making them very intricate if that is what you're going for. But if you need a quick card and you want to go a little bit faster than normal, you can always do this technique. It doesn't have to be sit down, spend 40 minutes coloring things out every time you craft, right? All right, so now we're going to add this panel onto an A2 size card base and I made this a um, full paneled card. So there's no edge around it. Um, I just think that it's really gorgeous, just like that. Beautiful and simple. I mean, it's got 3D embossing, gold embossing, like it's gorgeous. Okay, for our next card, we're bringing in the stencil of the month. There are five pieces to the stencil. The first two create the vines and the leaves, and that's what we're going to start with. So I have peeled paint, which by the way, is the second color I used for watercoloring on the previous card. And that's another way I like to make my cards quick and easy when I'm making a bunch, is just to use the supplies that I've already gotten out. So it was a no brainer for me to pick the peeled paint because I already had it out on my desk. So I went with it and used a blending brush to add that first layer. For the second layer, I wanted to go with something um, that's contrasting and a little bit darker. So I went with Rustic Wilderness. These greens are very different from each other, but I like the look and I I will tell you a little bit of the inspiration for this is something I get inspiration from a lot when creating floral scenes and that's my desert rose dishes that I inherited from my grandmother who got them from her mom so they're um, very special to me and these colors are very much like the desert rose dishes all right for our third layer we're starting with the largest part of our flowers and I'm using saltwater taffy which you might recognize from our previous card right which I also used on my large dye of the month card that I showed you at the very beginning of the video and that color palette that I used for the first card is actually what inspired the colors for the rest of my cards I kind of like to do that when I'm playing with all my club kits at once is to make something that's, you know, pretty matchy matchy. And then I can have a set of cards if I like. All right, for my, let's see, second layer of the flowers, I've got abandoned coral. And you can see I'm using this smaller blending brush now because the area I'm stenciling is quite small. So it's really handy to have a tool that fits the job. We've got a small opening, we've got a small brush, and it makes the work so much easier. These brushes come in a set of three from Spellbinders. All right, for our final layer, the area is very small openings. So again, having that small brush made quick work of this, and I wasn't wasting a ton of ink. One thing to note about this fifth layer of the stencil, there's openings that go over the flowers and openings that go over the leaves. So having a small brush again is very important because I can avoid the areas that are the leaves and I can come back in and get those with a different brush. Here I had a little piece of my stencil that had not broken away so I just picked that up with my pickup tool and cleared that <laughs> so I could stencil there but it's actually over one of the leaves. So um, I'll finish up the flowers and this these details really make these flowers, this final stencil. It's awesome. All right, so I I started out with green for my final layer of the stencil, but I, I peeled up the corner and looked at it and I was not in love with it. So I am bringing in some brown also, yes, inspired by my Desert Rose dishes. And this is the Scorched Timber, the latest, the newest, and the last of the Distress Oxide colors to be released. And I think that this is what made this card, this really dark, dark brown, really sets um, 
those little lines out as a really nice detail. So we're almost done here. And again, I'm using a small brush for those small openings and it's making it easy for me. And I think the stencil of the month that they, I mean, this is a new, one of the newest club kits they added. I'm in love with it. I'm loving the stencil of the month. This is just gorgeous. Like I couldn't, I couldn't stand it when I peeled it back. It was so beautiful. We are going to bring it back in the clear stamp of the month to stamp out the sentiment for you. I treated my paper with my powder tool, which actually we like to call it an anti-static powder tool. What it's really doing is decreasing the oil. It's covering up the oils on the paper that you've left with your fingers so that the powder doesn't stick to where you've left an oily mark. That's really what happens there. There's no really static on your paper. So that's what it's doing and it's very, very helpful. Um, I, even though I live in a very dry climate, you have oils on your hands. And so it really keeps that powder right where you want it. And then for my sub sentiment, um, it says, on your special day. So this could be like a bridal card. It could be a birthday card. It could be like a promotion at work type of thing. It could really go for anything, which I love having in my stash. Or in my case, this might become a set of gift cards that I give away. I am just loving how simple and gorgeous these cards are. All right, for our next card, we're bringing in that Glimmer Hot Foil Kit of the Month and some polished brass in um, hot foil. I put my hot foil face down onto my plate that's sitting on my platform face up and my paper was on top of that. After it warmed up, I ran it through my dye machine and the key to this, especially because it's a large um, full image, is to have really smooth cardstock and Spellbinders does carry that and it will help you get a really good impression. I'm also going to hot foil while I have my machine out and it's hot, a sentiment from that same Glimmer Hot Foil set. I love that most often the Glimmer Hot Foil set has sentiments in it. Now don't forget to save this negative piece because if you have a solid plate, you can run that through and get a reverse image and that would be so gorgeous. Okay, so I ran my sentiment through and then I have that ready to go for my card and it says, you make life colorful. Isn't that fun? Now this die I'm using is actually from the die set that goes with the clear stamp of the month, but it's gonna cut out this particular sentiment perfectly. So since I already had it out, I used it and it worked great. Now we're gonna use the die set again from the clear stamp of the month, but we're just using the die for the word hello. We're not gonna stamp it, but this die works really well as a standalone die and not just for die cutting out your stamp sentiment. I used the residual ink left on my large blending brush, and then I wanted a little bit more red for a little bit of like an ombre effect. So I'm doing that with my lumberjack plaid and a smaller style brush. And then I can die cut out the word hello, and it's gonna be all ombre, very cool. And there it is ready to go on this card. We're so close to finishing this one up. I'm really just gluing all the pieces down and letting that hot foil background stand on its own. It's so beautiful. And then I'll glue the sentiment right below the word hello. This will go onto an A2 size card base. And this one is going to have a white border all the way around. And so my front cover piece is actually five and a fourth by four inches onto my A2 size card, which is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a fourth to finish that one off. So shiny. I love it. Okay, card number four is with the Better Press of the Month. Look at all these splatters. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love splatter. So I'm gonna play with this. It has one of those templates to help you arrange things. But this is something that doesn't necessarily need to be like really, really lined up. Um, I ended up playing with this and putting extra splatters on mine and just having fun with it. So here I am using Garnet ink and I'm um, pressing this onto paper that's from Spellbinders. It's made for the better press. It's cotton paper. And um, the color palette that I've chosen, it's going to change. I don't end up using the green. I have started to ink up with the green and I was like, 
I can't do it. It's not, it's just not gonna go. So there you can see that first layer. Um, and once you have your better press plates stuck down to the platform, which is magnetic, you ink them up and then you put that top platen on, I believe that's what it's called, and you run it through your dye machine and then it's gonna press that paper onto the plates and not only press into the paper, but transfer the ink. It's a really cool process. It's really easy to do. And I just love that pressed in look, which is kind of hard to capture on camera, but it's really fun. So you can see I brought in two shades of pink and I'm just doing all pink with that like saffron color. And this second color that I'm using right here or the second pink taffy, that one is my favorite. I think it goes best with my color palette. And then I'm also using um, berry, mixed berry, triple berry. I believe it's called triple berry. <laughs> it's a pink that almost has like a purple tint to it. I don't know. I just had fun with my Better Press inks. I really um, could use a few more colors. I know they have some out, but I'm really missing like a good green and a good red. So I have to see if those are available. Maybe I just don't have them. So I finished out my background putting a few more random splatters on there. And then I have a scrap of my Better Press paper that I saved for an instance just like this, where I just need to do a sentiment. So I did that with that same taffy ink, and then I'm gonna die cut this out. There is a coordinating die in the Better Press set to cut out your sentiments, and so that's what I decided to do. And then it says, let your colors shine. I'm gonna take that same die set and die cut one from gold cardstock, as well as the word hello. That is gonna give me a shadow layer for my sentiment that I could offset my original one from and it just this is turning out so 80s to me I, and I'm a kid of the 80s so I love it I think it's so fun I probably like had a shirt with splatters like this on it maybe that's why I love splatters so much all right so then the gold sentiment is going down and here's a little secret I did end up doubling up the word hello I cut a second one and layered it over the top to make that gold sentiment a little bit thicker kind of like the sentiment below it is mounted that onto a card base with so that it has a border all the way around as well to finish it up I think it's so much fun so tell me below what do you guys think of these quick and easy cards I think this much this month's club kits are perfect for quick cards. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below about the August club kits. And tomorrow is going to be the first day of the September club kits and they're amazing. But before we go, I'm going to make some wax seals to go on the envelopes of these cards. I am using some red and some coral wax beads. Now, when you get the wax seal of the month, you also get beads but the ones that came with it didn't really match my card so I tried to pick some out that I already had that matched so um this one is the um big hello I think and I am mix those two colors and I'm pouring it out onto a piece of marble this is a coaster but I um got a tip from my friend Lynn of LV handcrafted to pour this out onto marble so it doesn't spread out so much that marble helps cool it down quickly and I loved that tip so here is my wax seal but I wanted to take this up a notch one thing I've been practicing and my friend Lynn has been working on is two toned wax seals. So I heat up my wax seal itself. I heated up a little bit of gold wax and then I poured it right onto that wax seal. I'm going to call it a stamp and fill in those letters. And then you can see I'm just scraping off any excess. And then we're going to set that little guy aside and melt some wax beads. And we're going to set that into a hot wax pour. And that gold should then transfer onto this wax seal. So we're going to try that. I'm pouring it out. I'm always trying to get kind of an oval when I'm doing my rectangular wax seals. So you'll see me try to kind of do that. Um, one thing that is very sad is I did not record me taking that apart. It does take a little bit longer to set when you're doing the two-tone, and this is the best one I made. It came out so good. So now I have wax seals that I'm gonna gift with these cards that can be put right onto the envelopes. And here's a look again at each of the cards I made. I really had fun with these and loved that I could make 
pretty cards that didn't take a long time, except for maybe this one, which did take a little bit longer with the large die, but you know what? Those flowers are gorgeous. So thank you so much for stopping by. Let me know if you have a favorite and maybe if you learned something in today's video. And I will see you all again very soon with another paper crafting video just for you. Happy stamping. Bye.